Enceladus, Moon, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. This recording was last updated on October 24, 2011. Enceladus is the sixth largest moon of Saturn. It was discovered in 1789 by William Herschel. Until the two Voyager spacecraft passed near it in the early 1980s, very little was known about this small moon besides the identification of water ice on its surface. The Voyagers showed that the diameter of Enceladus is only 500 kilometers, or 310 miles, about a tenth of that of Saturn's largest moon, Titan, and that it reflects almost all of the sunlight that strikes it. Voyager 1 found that Enceladus orbited in the densest part of Saturn's diffuse E-ring, indicating a possible association between the two, while Voyager 2 revealed that, despite the moon's small size, it had a wide range of terrains ranging from old, heavily cratered surfaces to young, tectonically deformed terrain, with some regions with surface ages as young as 100 million years old. In 2005, the Cassini spacecraft performed several close flybys of Enceladus, revealing the moon's surface and environment in greater detail. In particular, the probe discovered a water-rich plume venting from the moon's south polar region. This discovery, along with the presence of escaping internal heat and very few, if any, impact craters in the south polar region, shows that Enceladus is geologically active today. Moons in the extensive satellite systems of gas giants often become trapped in orbital resonances that lead to forced libration or orbital eccentricity. Proximity to the planet can then lead to tidal heating of the satellite's interior, offering a possible explanation for the activity. Enceladus is one of only three outer solar system bodies, along with Jupiter's moon Io and Neptune's moon Triton, where active eruptions have been observed. Analysis of the outgassing suggests that it originates from a body of subsurface liquid water, which, along with the unique chemistry found in the plume, has fueled speculations that Enceladus may be important in the study of astrobiology. The discovery of the plume has added further weight to the argument that material released from Enceladus is the source of the E-ring. In May 2011, NASA scientists at an Enceladus focus group conference reported that Enceladus, quote, is emerging as the most habitable spot beyond Earth in the solar system for life as we know it, unquote. Contents. Section 1. Name. Section 2. Exploration. Section 3. Characteristics. Section 4. Statistics. Section 1. Name. Enceladus is named after the giant Enceladus of Greek mythology. The name Enceladus, like the names of each of the first seven satellites of Saturn to be discovered, was suggested by William Herschel's son, John Herschel, in his 1847 publication, Results of Astronomical Observations Made at the Cape of Good Hope. He chose these names because Saturn, known in Greek mythology as Cronus, was the leader of the Titans. Features on Enceladus are named by the International Astronomical Union, or IAU, after characters and places from the Arabian Nights. Impact craters are named after characters, while other feature types such as fossae, long narrow depressions, dorsa, ridges, planitia, plains, and sulci, long parallel grooves, are named after places. Fifty-seven features have been officially named by the IAU. Twenty-two features were named in 1982 based on the results of the Voyager flybys, and 35 features were approved in November 2006 based on the results of Cassini's three flybys in 2005. Examples of approved names include Samarkand Solsi, Aladdin Crater, Daryabar Fassa, and Serendib Planitia. For more information on Enceladus's features, see the Wikipedia article List of Geological Features on Enceladus. Section 2. Exploration Enceladus was discovered by Frederick William Herschel on August 28, 1789, during the first use of his new 1.2-meter telescope, then the largest in the world. Herschel first observed Enceladus in 1787, but in his smaller 16.5-centimeter telescope, the moon was not recognized. 
its faint apparent magnitude, positive 11.7, and its proximity to much brighter Saturn and its rings, make Enceladus difficult to observe from Earth, requiring a telescope with a mirror of 15 to 30 centimeters in diameter, depending on atmospherical conditions and light pollution. Like many Saturnian satellites discovered prior to the space age, Enceladus was first observed during a Saturnian equinox, when Earth is within the ring plane. At such times, the reduction in glare from the rings makes the moons easier to observe. Prior to the Voyager missions, the view of Enceladus improved little from the dot first observed by Herschel. Only its orbital characteristics were known, with estimations of its mass, density, and albedo. The two Voyager spacecraft obtained the first close-up images of Enceladus. Voyager 1 was the first to fly past Enceladus, at a distance of 202,000 kilometers, on November 12, 1980. Images acquired from this distance had very poor spatial resolution, but revealed a highly reflective surface devoid of impact craters, indicating a youthful surface. Voyager 1 also confirmed that Enceladus was embedded in the densest part of Saturn's diffuse E-ring. Combined with the apparent youthful appearance of the surface, Voyager scientists suggested the E-ring consisted of particles vented from Enceladus's surface. Voyager 2 passed closer to Enceladus at 87,010 kilometers on August 26, 1981, allowing much higher resolution images of this satellite. These images revealed the youthful nature of much of its surface. They also revealed a surface with different regions, with vastly different surface ages, with a heavily cratered mid to high northern latitude region, and a lightly cratered region closer to the equator. This geologic diversity contrasts with the ancient, heavily cratered surface of Mimas, another moon of Saturn slightly smaller than Enceladus. The geologically youthful terrains came as a great surprise to the scientific community, because no theory was then able to predict that such a small and cold compared to Jupiter's highly active moon Io, celestial body could bear signs of such activity. However, Voyager 2 failed to determine whether Enceladus was currently active or whether it was the source of the E-ring. The answer to these and other mysteries would have to wait until the arrival of the Cassini spacecraft on July 1, 2004, when it went into orbit around Saturn. Given the results from the Voyager 2 images, Enceladus was considered a priority target by the Cassini mission planners, and several targeted flybys within 1,500 kilometers of the surface were planned, as well as numerous non-targeted opportunities within 100,000 kilometers of Enceladus. So far, four close flybys of Enceladus have been performed, yielding significant information concerning Enceladus's surface, as well as the discovery of water vapor and complex hydrocarbons venting from the geologically active South Polar region. These discoveries have prompted the adjustment of Cassini's flight plan to allow closer flybys of Enceladus, including an encounter in March 2008, which took the probe to within 52 kilometers of the moon's surface. The extended mission for Cassini included seven close flybys of Enceladus between July 2008 and July 2010, including two passes at only 50 kilometers in the later half of 2008. The discoveries Cassini has made at Enceladus have prompted several studies into follow-up missions. In 2007, NASA performed a concept study for a mission that would orbit Enceladus and would perform a detailed examination of the south polar plumes. The concept was not selected for further study. The European Space Agency also recently explored plans to send the probe to Enceladus in a mission to be combined with studies of Titan. The Titan-Saturn System Mission, or TSSM, is a joint NASA-ESA proposal for exploration of Saturn's moons, including Enceladus. TSSM was competing against the Europa-Jupiter System Mission, or EJSM, proposal for funding. In February 2009, it was announced that ESA and NASA had given the EJSM mission priority ahead of TSSM, although TSSM will continue to be studied for a later launch date. Section 3. Characteristics Section 3.1. Orbit Enceladus is one of the major inner satellites of Saturn. It is the 14th satellite when ordered by distance from Saturn, 
and orbits within the densest part of the E-ring, the outermost of Saturn's rings, an extremely wide but very diffuse disk of microscopic icy or dusty material, beginning at the orbit of Mimas and ending somewhere around the orbit of Rhea. Enceladus orbits Saturn at a distance of 238,000 kilometers from the planet's center and 180,000 kilometers from its cloud tops between the orbits of Mimas and Tethys, requiring 32.9 hours to revolve once, fast enough for its motion to be observed over a single night of observation. Enceladus is currently in a 2 to 1 mean motion orbital resonance with Dione, completing two orbits of Saturn for every one orbit completed by Dione. This resonance helps maintain Enceladus's orbital eccentricity of 0 0.0047 and provides a heating source for Enceladus's geological activity. Like most of the larger satellites of Saturn, Enceladus rotates synchronously with its orbital period, keeping one face pointed towards Saturn. Unlike the Earth's moon, Enceladus does not appear to librate about its spin axis, more than 1.5 degrees. However, analysis of the shape of Enceladus suggests that at some point it was in a 1 to 4 forced secondary spin orbit libration. This libration, like the resonance with Dione, could have provided Enceladus with an additional heat source. Section 3.1.1 Interaction with the E-Ring The E-Ring is the widest and outermost ring of Saturn. It is an extremely wide but very diffuse disk of microscopic icy or dusty material, beginning at the orbit of Mimas and ending somewhere around the orbit of Rhea though some observations suggest that it extends beyond the orbit of Titan, making it one million kilometers wide. However, numerous mathematical models show that such a ring is unstable, with a lifespan between 10,000 and one million years. Therefore, particles composing it must be constantly replenished. Enceladus is orbiting inside this ring, in a place where it is narrowest but present in its highest density. Therefore, Several theories suspected Enceladus to be the main source of particles for the E-ring. This hypothesis was supported by Cassini's flyby. There are actually two distinct mechanisms feeding the ring with particles. The first, and probably the most important, source of particles comes from the cryovolcanic plume in the south polar region of Enceladus. While a majority of particles fall back to the surface, some of them escape Enceladus's gravity and enter orbit around Saturn since Enceladus's escape velocity is only 866 kilometers an hour. The second mechanism comes from meteoric bombardment of Enceladus, raising dust particles from the surface. This mechanism is not unique to Enceladus, but is valid for all Saturn's moons orbiting inside the E-ring. Section 3.2, Size and Shape. Enceladus is a relatively small satellite, with a mean diameter of 505 kilometers, or 314 miles, only one-seventh the diameter of Earth's own moon. In diameter, Enceladus is small enough to fit within the length of the island of Great Britain. It could also fit comfortably within the states of Arizona or Colorado, although as a spherical object, its surface area is much greater, just over 800,000 square kilometers, or 310,000 square miles, almost the same as Mozambique, or 15% larger than Texas. Its mass and diameter make Enceladus the sixth most massive and largest satellite of Saturn, after Titan, 5,150 kilometers, Rhea, 1,530 kilometers, Iepetus, 1,440 kilometers, Dione, 1,120 kilometers, and Tethys. 1,050 kilometers. It is also one of the smallest of Saturn's spherical satellites, since all smaller satellites, except Mimas, 390 kilometers, have an irregular shape. Enceladus has a shape of an oblate spheroid. Its dimensions, calculated from pictures taken by Cassini's ISS instrument, are of 513 by 503 by 497 kilometers, with the first number corresponding to the diameter between sub- and anti-Saturnian poles, with the second number corresponding to the diameter between the leading and trailing poles, and with the third number corresponding to the distance between the north and south poles. 
This is the most stable orientation, with the moon's rotation along the short axis, and the long axis aligned radically away from Saturn. Section 3.3 Surface Voyager 2, in August 1981, was the first spacecraft to observe the surface in detail. Examination of the resulting high-resolution mosaic reveals at least five different types of terrain, including several regions of crater terrain, regions of smooth or young terrain, and lanes of ridge terrain often bordering the smooth areas. In addition, extensive linear cracks and scarps were observed. Given the relative lack of craters on the smooth plains, these regions are probably less than a few hundred million years old. Accordingly, Enceladus must have been recently active with water volcanism, or other processes that renew the surface. The fresh, clean ice that dominates its surface gives Enceladus probably the most reflective surface of any body in the solar system, with a visual geometric albedo of 1.38. Because it reflects so much sunlight, its mean surface temperature at noon only reaches negative 198 degrees Celsius, somewhat colder than other Saturnian satellites. Observations during three flybys by Cassini on February 17, March 9, and July 14 of 2005 revealed Enceladus's surface features in much greater detail than the Voyager 2 observations. For example, the smooth plains observed by Voyager 2 resolved into relatively crater-free regions filled with numerous small ridges and scarps. In addition, numerous fractures were found within the older crater terrain suggesting that the surface has been subjected to extensive deformation since the craters were formed. Finally, several additional regions of young terrain were discovered in areas not well imaged by either Voyager spacecraft, such as the bizarre terrain near the South Pole. Section 3.3.1 Impact Craters Impact cratering is a common occurrence on many solar system bodies. Much of Enceladus's surface is covered with craters at various densities and levels of degradation. From Voyager 2 observations, three different units of crater topography were identified on the basis of their crater densities, from CT sub 1 and CT sub 2, both containing numerous 10 to 20 kilometer wide craters, though differing in the degree of deformation, to CP, consisting of lightly cratered plains. This subdivision of crater terrains on the basis of crater density, and thus surface age, suggests that Enceladus has been resurfaced in multiple stages. Recent Cassini observations have provided a much closer look at the CT sub 2 and CP cratered units. These high resolution observations reveal that many of Enceladus's craters are heavily deformed through viscous relaxation and fracturing. Viscous relaxation allows gravity, over geologic timescales, to deform craters and other topographic features formed in water ice, reducing the amount of topography over time. The rate at which this occurs is dependent on the temperature of the ice. Warmer ice is easier to deform than colder, stiffer ice. Viscously relaxed craters tend to have domed floors, or are recognized as craters only by a raised circular rim. Dunyazard, a large crater, is a prime example of a viscously relaxed crater on Enceladus, with a prominent domed floor. In addition, many craters on Enceladus have been heavily modified by tectonic fractures. Nearly all craters on Enceladus thus far imaged by Cassini in the CT sub 2 unit show signs of tectonic deformation. These two deformation styles, viscous relaxation and fracturing, demonstrate that while crater terrains are the oldest regions on Enceladus because of their high crater retention, nearly all craters on Enceladus are in some stage of degradation. Section 3.3.2 Tectonics Voyager 2 found several types of tectonic features on Enceladus, including troughs, scarps, and belts of grooves and ridges. Recent results from Cassini suggest that tectonism is the dominant deformation style on Enceladus. One of the more dramatic types of tectonic features found on Enceladus are rifts. These canyons can be up to 200 kilometers long, 5 to 10 kilometers wide, and 1 kilometer deep. Such features appear relatively young, as they cut across other tectonic features and have sharp topographic relief 
with prominent outcrops along the cliff faces. Another example of tectonism on Enceladus is groove terrain, consisting of lanes of servilinear grooves and ridges. These bands, first discovered by Voyager 2, often separate smooth plains from cratered regions. Groove terrain, such as Samarkand Sulci, are reminiscent of groove terrain on Ganymede. However, unlike those seen on Ganymede, groove topography on Enceladus is generally much more complex. Rather than parallel sets of grooves, these lanes can often appear as bands of crudely aligned, chevron-shaped features. In other areas, these bands appear to bow upwards with fractures and ridges running the length of the feature. Cassini observations of Samarkand Sulci have revealed intriguing dark spots, 125 and 750 meters wide, which appear to run parallel to narrow fractures. Currently, these spots are interpreted as collapse pits within these ridged plain belts. In addition to deep fractures and grooved lanes, Enceladus has several other types of tectonic terrain. Many of the fractures on Enceladus are found in bands cutting across cratered terrain. These fractures appear to propagate down only a few hundred meters into the crust. Many appear to have been influenced during their formation by the weakened regolith produced by impact craters, often changing the strike of the propagating fracture. Another example of tectonic features on Enceladus are the linear grooves first found by Voyager 2 and seen at much higher resolution by Cassini. These linear grooves can be seen cutting across other terrain types, like the groove and ridge belts. Like the deep rifts, they appear to be among the youngest features on Enceladus. However, some linear grooves appear to be softened, like the craters nearby, suggesting an older age. Ridges have also been observed on Enceladus, though not nearly to the extent as those seen on Europa. These ridges are relatively limited in extent and are up to one kilometer tall. One kilometer high domes have also been observed. Given the level of tectonic resurfacing found on Enceladus, it is clear that tectonism has been an important driver of geology on this small moon for much of its history. Section 3.3.3 .3 Smooth Plains Two units of smooth plains were also observed by Voyager 2. These plains generally have low relief and have far fewer craters than in the cratered terrains and plains, indicating a relatively young surface age. In one of these smooth plain regions, Serendib Planitia, no impact craters were visible down to the limit of resolution. Another region of smooth plains to the southwest of Serendib is crisscrossed by several troughs and scarps. Cassini has since viewed these smooth plains regions, like Sarandi Planitia and Dayar Planitia, at much higher resolution. Cassini images show smooth plain regions to be filled with low relief ridges and fractures. These features are currently interpreted as being caused by shear deformation. The high resolution images of Sarandi Planitia have revealed a number of small impact craters, which allow for an estimate of the surface age either 170 million years or 3.7 billion years, depending on assumed impactor population. The expanded surface coverage provided by Cassini has allowed for the identification of additional regions of smooth plains, particularly on Enceladus's leading hemisphere, the side of Enceladus that faces the direction of motion as the moon orbits Saturn. Rather than being covered in low relief ridges, this region is covered in numerous crisscrossing sets of troughs and ridges, similar to the deformation seen in the South Polar region. This area is on the opposite side of the satellite from Serendib and Dayar Planitiae, suggesting that the placement of these regions is influenced by Saturn's tides on Enceladus. Section 3.3.4, South Polar Region. Images taken by Cassini during the flyby on July 14, 2005, revealed a distinctive, tectonically deformed region surrounding Enceladus's South Pole. This area, reaching as far north as 60 degrees south latitude, is covered in tectonic fractures and ridges. The area has few sizable impact craters, suggesting that it is the youngest surface on Enceladus and on any of the mid-sized icy satellites. Modeling of the cratering rate suggests that some regions of the SPT are possibly as young as 50,000 years or younger. 
Near the center of this terrain are four fractures bounded on either side by ridges, unofficially called tiger stripes. These fractures appear to be the youngest features in this region, and are surrounded by mint green-colored, coarse-grained water ice, seen elsewhere on the surface within outcrops and fracture walls. Here the blue ice is on a flat surface, indicating that the region is young enough not to have been coated by fine-grained water ice from E-ring. Results from the Visual and Infrared Spectrometer VIMS, instrument suggest that the green-colored material surrounding the tiger stripes is chemically distinct from the rest of the surface of Enceladus. VIMS detected crystalline water ice in the stripes, suggesting that they are quite young, likely less than a thousand years old, or the surface ice has been thermally altered in the recent past. VIMS also detected simple organic compounds in the tiger stripes, chemistry not found anywhere else on the satellite thus far. One of these areas of blue ice on the south polar region was observed at very high resolution during the July 14 flyby, revealing an area of extreme tectonic deformation and blocky terrain, with some areas covered in boulders 10 to 100 meters across. The boundary of the south polar region is marked by a pattern of parallel Y and V-shaped ridges and valleys. The shape, orientation, and location of these features indicate that they are caused by changes in the overall shape of Enceladus. Currently, there are two theories for what could cause such a shift in shape. First, the orbit of Enceladus may have migrated inward, leading to an increase in Enceladus's rotation rate. Such a shift would have led to a flattening of Enceladus's rotation axis. Another theory suggests that a rising mass of warm, low-density material in Enceladus's interior led to a shift in the position of the current south pole terrain from Enceladus's southern mid-latitudes to its south pole. Consequently, the ellipsoid shape of Enceladus would have adjusted to match the new orientation. One consequence of the axial flattening theory is that both polar regions should have similar tectonic deformation histories. However, the north polar region is densely cratered and has a much older surface age than the south pole. Thickness variations in Enceladus's lithosphere is one explanation for this discrepancy. Variations in lithospheric thickness are supported by the correlation between the Y-shaped discontinuities and the V-shaped cusps along the south polar terrain margin and the relative surface age of the adjacent non-south polar terrain regions. The Y-shaped discontinuities and the north-south trending tension fractures into which they lead are correlated with younger terrain with presumably thinner lithospheres. The V-shaped cusps are adjacent to older, more heavily cratered terrains. For more information on Enceladus's south polar region, please see the Wikipedia article Tiger Stripes Enceladus. Section 3.4 Cryovolcanism Following the Voyager encounters with Enceladus in the early 1980s, scientists postulated that the moon may be geologically active based on its young, reflective surface and location near the core of the E-ring. Based on the connection between Enceladus and the E-ring, it was thought that Enceladus was the source of material in the E-ring, perhaps through venting of water vapor from Enceladus's interior. However, the Voyagers failed to produce conclusive evidence that Enceladus is active today. Thanks to data from a number of instruments on the Cassini spacecraft in 2005, cryovolcanism, where water and other volatiles are the materials erupted instead of silicate rock, has been discovered on Enceladus. The first Cassini sighting of a plume of icy particles above Enceladus's south pole came from the Imaging Science Subsystem, ISS, images, taken in January and February 2005, though the possibility of the plume being a camera artifact stalled an official announcement. Data from the magnetometer instrument during the February 17, 2005 encounter provided a hint that the feature might be real when it found evidence for an atmosphere at Enceladus. The magnetometer observed an increase in the power of ion cyclone waves near Enceladus. These waves are produced by the interaction of ionized particles and magnetic fields, and the frequency of waves can be used to identify the composition, in this case ionized water vapor. During the next two encounters, the magnetometer team determined that gases in Enceladus's atmosphere are concentrated over the south polar region, 
with atmospheric density away from the pole being much lower. The ultraviolet imaging spectrograph, UVIS, confirmed this result by observing two stellar occultations during the February 17 and July 14 encounters. Unlike the magnetometer, UVIS failed to detect an atmosphere above Enceladus during the February encounter, when it looked for evidence for an atmosphere over the equatorial region, but did detect water vapor during an occultation over the south polar region during the July encounter. Fortuitously, Cassini flew through this gas cloud during the July 14 encounter, allowing instruments like the Ion and Neutral Mass Spectrometer, INMS, and the Cosmic Dust Analyzer, CDA, to directly sample the plume. INMS measured the composition of the gas cloud, detecting mostly water vapor, as well as minor components like molecular nitrogen, methane, and carbon dioxide. CDA detected a large increase in the number of particles near Enceladus, confirming the satellite as the primary source for the E-ring. Analysis of the CDA and INMS data suggests that the gas cloud Cassini flew through during the July encounter and observed from a distance with its magnetometer and UVIS was actually a water-rich cryovolcanic plume originating from vents near the South Pole. Visual confirmation of venting came in November 2005, when ISS imaged geyser-like jets of icy particles rising from the moon's south polar region. As stated above, the plume was imaged before, in January and February 2005, but additional studies of the camera's response at high phase angles, when the sun is almost behind Enceladus, and comparison with equivalent high phase images taken of other Saturnian satellites, were required before this could be confirmed. The images taken in November 2005 showed the plume's fine structure, revealing numerous jets, perhaps issuing from numerous distinct vents, within a larger, faint component extending out nearly 500 kilometers from the surface, thus making Enceladus the fourth body in the solar system to have confirmed volcanic activity, along with Earth, Neptune's Triton, and Jupiter's Io. Cassini's UVIS later observed gas jets coinciding with the dust jets seen by ISS during a non-targeted encounter with Enceladus in October 2007. Additional observations were acquired during a flyby on March 12, 2008. Data on this flyby revealed additional chemicals in the plume, including simple and complex hydrocarbons such as propane, ethane, and acetylene. This finding further increases the potential for life beneath the surface of Enceladus. The composition of Enceladus's plume, as measured by the INMS instrument on Cassini, is similar to that seen at most comets. Section 3.4.1 Prior to the Ammonia Discovery The combined analysis of imaging, mass spectrometry, and magnetospheric data suggests that the observed south polar plume emanates from pressurized subsurface chambers, similar to geysers from Earth. Because no ammonia was found in the venin material by either INMS or UVIS, which could act as an antifreeze, such a heated, pressurized chamber would consist of nearly pure liquid water, with a temperature of at least 270 degrees Kelvin, that's minus 3 degrees Celsius. Pure water would require more energy to melt, either from tidal or radiogenic sources, than an ammonia water mixture. Another possible method for generating a plume is sublimation of warm surface ice. During the July 14, 2005 flyby, the composite infrared spectrometer, CIRS, found a warm region near the South Pole. Temperatures found in this region range from 85 to 90 degrees Kelvin, to small areas with temperatures as high as 157 degrees Kelvin, that's minus 116 degrees Celsius much too warm to be explained by solar heating, indicating that parts of the South Pole region are heated from the interior of Enceladus. Ice at these temperatures is warm enough to sublimate at a much faster rate than the background surface, thus generating a plume. This hypothesis is attractive, since the subsurface layer heating the surface water ice could be an ammonia water slurry at temperatures as low as 170 degrees Kelvin, minus 103 degrees Celsius and, thus, not as much energy is required to produce the plume activity. However, the abundance of particles in the south polar plume favors the cold geyser model, 
as opposed to an ice sublimation model. Alternatively, Kiefer et al. 2006, suggests that Enceladus's geysers originate from clathrate hydrates, where carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrogen are released when exposed to the vacuum of space by the active tiger stripe fractures. This hypothesis would not require the amount of heat needed to melt water, as required by the cold geyser model, and would explain the lack of ammonia. Section 3.4.2 Ammonia Discovery In July 2009, it was announced that ammonia had been discovered during flybys in July and October 2008. Section 3.5 Internal Structure Prior to the Cassini mission, relatively little was known about the interior of Enceladus. However, results from recent flybys of Enceladus by the Cassini spacecraft have provided much needed information for models of Enceladus's interior. These include a better determination of the mass and triaxial ellipsoid shape, high resolution observations of the surface, and new insights on Enceladus's geochemistry. Mass estimates from the Voyager program missions suggested that Enceladus was composed almost entirely of water ice. However, based on the effects of Enceladus's gravity on Cassini, its mass was determined to be much higher than previously thought, yielding a density of 1.61 grams per centimeter cubed. This density is higher than Saturn's other mid-sized icy satellites, indicating that Enceladus contains a greater percentage of silicates and iron. With additional material besides water ice, Enceladus's interior may have experienced comparatively more heating from the decay of radioactive elements. Castillo et al. 2005 suggested that Iepetus and the other icy satellites of Saturn formed relatively quickly after the formation of the Saturnian subnebula, and thus were rich in short-lived radionuclides. These radionuclides, like aluminum-26 and iron-60, have short half-lives and would produce interior heating relatively quickly. Without the short-lived variety, Enceladus's complement of long-lived radionuclides would not have been enough to prevent rapid freezing of the interior, even with Enceladus's comparatively high rock mass fraction, given Enceladus's small size. Given Enceladus's relatively high rock mass fraction, the proposed enhancement in aluminum-26 and iron-60 would result in a differentiated body with an icy mantle and a rocky core. Subsequent radioactive and tidal heating would raise the temperature of the core to 1,000 degrees Kelvin, enough to melt the inner mantle. However, for Enceladus to be active, part of the core must have melted too, forming magma chambers that would flex under the strain of Saturn's tides. Tidal heating, such as from the resonance with Dione or from libration, would then have sustained these hot spots in the core until the present and would power the current geological activity. In addition to its mass and model geochemistry, researchers have also examined Enceladus's shape to test whether the satellite is differentiated or not. Porco et al. 2006 used limb measurements to determine that Enceladus's shape, assuming it is in hydrostatic equilibrium, is consistent with an undifferentiated interior, in contradiction to the geological and geochemical evidence. However, the current shape also supports the possibility that Enceladus is not in hydrostatic equilibrium and may have rotated faster at some point in the recent past with a differentiated interior. Section 3.6 Possible Water Ocean In late 2008, scientists observed water vapor spewing from Enceladus's surface. This could indicate the presence of liquid water, which might also make it possible for Enceladus to support life. Candice Hansen, a scientist with NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab in California, headed up a research team on the plumes after they were found to be moving at around 2,189 kilometers per hour. That's 1,360 miles per hour. Since that speed is difficult to attain unless liquids are involved, they decided to investigate the compositions of the plumes. Eventually, it was discovered that in the E-ring, about 6% of particles contain 0.5 to 2% of sodium salts by mass, which is a significant amount. In the parts of the plume close to Enceladus, the fraction of salty particles increases to 70% by number and more than 99% by mass. 
Such particles presumably are frozen spray from the salty underground ocean. On the other hand, the small salt pore particles form by homogeneous nucleation directly from the gas phase. The sources of salty particles are uniformly distributed along the tiger stripes, whereas sources of fresh particles are closely related to the high-speed gas jets. The salty particles move slowly and mostly fall back onto the surface, while the fast, fresh particles escape to the E-ring, explaining its salt-poor composition. The salty composition of the plume strongly suggests that its source is a subsurface salty ocean, or subsurface caverns filled with salty water. Alternatives, such as the clathrate sublimation hypothesis, cannot explain how salty particles form. Additionally, Cassini found traces of organic compounds in some dust grains. Enceladus is therefore a candidate for harboring extraterrestrial life. The presence of liquid water under the crust means there has to be an internal heat source. Scientists now believe it is a combination of radioactive decay and tidal heating, as tidal heating alone is not enough to explain the heat. Mimas, another of Saturn's moons, is closer to the planet and has a much more eccentric orbit, meaning it should be exposed to far greater tidal forces than Enceladus. And yet, its old and scarred surface implies that it is geologically dead. Section 4. Statistics Discovery Discovered by William Herschel Discovery Date August 28, 1789 Designations Alternative Name Saturn II Adjective Enceladin Orbital Characteristics Semi-Major Axis 237,948 kilometers. Eccentricity, 0 0.0047. Orbital period, 1.370218 days, or 118,386.82 seconds. Inclination, 0 0.019 degrees to Saturn's equator. Satellite of Saturn. Physical characteristics Dimensions 513.2 by 502.8 by 496.6 kilometers Mean radius 252.1 plus or minus 0 0.2 kilometers or 0 0.0395 Earths Mass 1.08022 plus or minus 0 0.00101 times 10 to the 20 kilograms, or 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 Earths. Mean density, 1.609 plus or minus 0 0.005 grams per centimeter cubed. Equatorial surface gravity, 0 0.114 meters per second squared, or 0 0.0113 g's. Escape velocity, 0 0.239 kilometers per second, or 860.4 kilometers per hour. Rotation period, synchronous. Axial tilt, 0. Geometric albedo, 1.375 plus or minus 0 0.008. Bond albedo, 0 0.99 minimum surface temperature 32.9 kelvin mean surface temperature 75 kelvin max surface temperature 145 kelvin apparent magnitude 11.7 atmosphere surface pressure trace significant spatial variability composition 91% water vapor, 4% nitrogen, 3.2% carbon dioxide, 1.7% methane. You have just finished listening to Enceladus, Moon, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. This recording was last updated on October 24, 2011. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 Unported License 
available at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash buy dash sa slash 3.0.